Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for bringing us to church today. Thank you that we are allowed to hear your word today. Father, as we go into your word, Father, let us take something from it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name I pray. All right, today, um, the, I'm going with the theme of the month. So the theme of this month is breaking limitations. So today we'll be looking at going to the next level. So this is after you break limitations, you will now end up in the next level. So the scripture that we're going to be revolving this um, teaching around is um, 2 Kings 6, 2 to 4. Can we please have that on the screen? So 2 Kings 2 says, Let us go to Jordan and each man get their house a, a beam and let us make us a place that there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go. Then number three says, Once one said, Be pleased to go with your servants. He answers, I will go. So he went with them. And when he, they came to Jordan, they cut down trees. Now, this passage is revolved around there was those people that were in the temple, they said that the temple was, it was too small for them. So because it was too small for them, they wanted to expand. Now, this, the meaning of this when it comes to our lives is that when you know that where you are is too small, you need to be able to break out and make a bigger place for yourself. So revolving to the, the next level, when we look at others and we look at other people and their success, sometimes we, we might find ourselves envying them. Oh, like, why can, I, why can we be like that? But the truth is, God has an appointed time for everybody. So if we, are not, if we are not careful, we can be consumed by envy and jealousy of others. So it's better for us to wait for God's time for ourselves. So revolving to the next level, for you to get to the next level, there's three things you must do. The first thing you must do, you must desire enlargement. Now, a lot of people might say they desire enlargement, but it's one thing to say it and one thing to actually want it. So, when it comes to our individual lives, let's say we are, let's say we are, how do I say this? We are, we are in one place and we want to, and we've been doing the same thing because humans are creatures of habit. So, we've been doing the same thing for a long time. Before you can get to the next level, you cannot be doing that same thing comfortably. Because God, when it comes to his plan towards us, he's not going to allow us to be comfortable. Because most people, when they draw out the plan that they want to do for their lives, there's no hardship along the way. It's usually easy for them. But that plan is not God's plan. So God's plan is the one where when God wants you to do something or when God wants you to get somewhere. He's going to allow you to go through some things. Because if he doesn't allow you to go through some things, then you, when you get what you want, you won't be able to sustain it. So if we're not walking and living in abundant life, we need to find out why. The word of God says in John eight thirty six. We have that. Therefore, if a son, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. So, this is saying that God, if He wants us to get to where we're going, He He has to make us free first. So we have to we have to want it. So let us join an agreement to have freedom from all limitations. This is part of God's plan for every one of us. This we can do by desire for our enlargement without limitations and taking decisions toward our enlargement. In life, 
you must always seek to associate with people who have a God-given vision and are driven by it. So this is meaning if you have some friends or some people around you that they're not driven by God or what they're doing is not where you want to be, then you shouldn't have those kinds of friends. Because let's say you, you, got, you all are going somewhere. What those people want to do where you're going is not what you need to be doing. That's not God's plan for you. So you need to get out of there. The devil only attacks people who carry supernatural grace and favor. The extent to which you know, the extent to which you know God is directly dependent on the level to which God will reveal himself to you. So before God can reveal himself to you, you have to be in a certain standing with him. So that means it's not about just coming to church every day or just reading your Bible some days of the week. You have to dig and be with Christ. You have to dig and be with Christ. Never allow repeated failures and defeats to prevent you from processing in life. If you have a passion to see your God-given vision come to fruition, you, you, will, not allow it to, you will not allow any limitation or hindrance. Micah 7, 8. And we have that on the screen. Do not rejoice over me, my enemy. When I fall, I will arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. So, this is saying that once you, let's say you're going to do a project, and it may be the first time it doesn't go as well as you plan, it doesn't mean you should first give up. Because if you give up, that means you didn't really have the desire to do it in the first place. Because God is never limited by time, space, or circumstances. He is a God of no boundaries. God has answers to all questions of life. He has solutions prepared in advance for all problems. He is never confused or dumbfounded by issues of life. God has control and power over everything. Everybody, everybody and every circumstances. There is a fullness of grace, favor, and blessing in the Lord, but there are people who cannot reach out and enjoy all of these goodies in the Lord. So this is how you would enjoy the blessings of the Lord. Number one is to have faith in God and not men. Because when you have faith in men, it's already known that they will disappoint you. So it's better to just have trust in God. Because let's say you have a plan and you're basing your plan off of somebody else to help you. And that person now, when it comes time for them to show up, they, doesn't, they don't show up. So it's better that you trust in God and God will reveal his plan for you. Number two is to have a spirit of endurance and patience. Now, the spirit of endurance and patience is, it comes in many different ways because let's say your mates, they are doing things, they are going places, they are getting all kinds of money and stuff like that, but you are looking at them like, wow, why can I not be like that? But God, he, your time, it might be bigger than what, what they're having. But you have to wait. Because if you don't wait, then you won't, you won't receive it. You must understand that God will never deny you of his blessings. He only works in his time and not man's time. He makes all things beautiful in his time. Number three, be obedient to the Lord. He has the blueprint to everyone's life and the solution to every problem in life. As you go through the week, know that God is never bound or limited by any circumstance. And you should never be limited or bound by any devil or circumstance. As long as you are created in the image and likeness of God. Now, along the way, when you're, when you're trying to get to the next level, there will be plenty of distractions. And those distractions, if you don't... If you don't take them the right way or deal with them the right way, then you, you will fall. As, as they were cutting trees in the second kings, they, needed, they, they, need, they did it because they needed enlargement. The axe head that they were using to cut fell into the river, meaning that the end of, 
meaning and end of their godly ambition and pursuit. Not only that, the axe was borrowed and meant and was meant to be returned. So them dropping it has brought shame and confusion and discouragement on their way of progress and enlargement. Some people, they feel trapped and some people, they feel like you are at the end of, some people feel like they're at the end of the line. So what do you do when you reach that point? This passage lets us know that we have to reach the end of our rope. There's a help and there's a hope. When, when you reach the end point, the world, the flesh, and the devil are all going to tell you that God doesn't see and he doesn't care for you. The fact that he does see, the fact is that he does see. Proverbs 15.3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil one and the good. That means when you feel like God is not there for you or when, when, God, when, when you are in a bad place, God is still seeing you. 2 Corinthians 16, 9. Yes, we, we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves but in God who raises the dead. So that's just saying the same thing, that God is watching us and keeping over us. And he does care. you find that in Hebrews 4.15. Hebrews 4.15. Let's read that all together. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. That's good. So God does care and he, and he knows about what you're facing. These verses are designed to teach us, these verses are designed to teach us about our problems. While they may appear to be How, do, how, how the problems, they might seem like they're unbearable in our eyes. They're really just God giving us opportunity in disguise. Therefore, no matter what you are called on or to face in life, learn to turn the Lord's first, turn to the Lord first for help, the help you need. He cares, he is able, and he will work in your need. In conclusion, often God will use the trials and heartaches and the burdens of life to bring us to a place where we can honestly see our need and our own inability to meet it. This means when, when we go through some things in life, that's how we'll end up going to the next level. Because if, if you don't go through it, then God cannot allow you to see what you need. Because once you, once you get to that point and you feel like God, God has forsaken you, something might just turn around and you'll end up in the place where you need to be. May the Lord bless the sharing of his word. Let us pray. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for allowing us to share your word. Father, as we go today, Father, Lord, let us have gained something from it. Father, Lord, if there's anyone among us that feels like you're not there for them, Father, Lord, be there for them in Jesus' name. Reveal to every one of us your plan for our lives. Father, Lord, don't allow us to follow through with our plan. Give us your plan for us. For in Jesus' name I have prayed.